you were talking about peaks and nulls, and I wanted to jump to to that graphic. I think we might be jumping over one or two here. Um, they're called four inches LF and HF. Yeah. Uh, and I'd love for you to, to talk a little bit about those because that is a very interesting phenomenon that happens. You can move your head. Somebody in the chat room was mentioning this is why I wanted to jump to it. Um, uh, I, for, I can't see who it is right at the moment, but uh, somebody was saying about moving your head a few inches one way or the other can make a huge difference. It, it sure it sure does. Uh, and if you have that graph, uh, that's also in the same room. It's a different set of tests. Uh, this was done, I think, with uh, with one speaker and one subwoofer. It might have been two speakers. I forget. It was a couple of years earlier. But it was that same, you know, 16 foot by 11 and a half foot room with an eight foot ceiling. And uh, and at that time, I was testing, uh, just testing uh, uh, bass traps uh, versus EQ. We had uh, a fellow who was a professional, you know, installer and a big EQ proponent. And he came and he was going to adjust his equalizer by ear. So, and because my feeling was, you know, well, yes, you can equalize a flat response at one place, but if you move just a couple of inches away, just from your left ear to your right ear, uh, you're going to have a different response. So just to prove that point, we measured uh, at two locations, the prime listening seat. We actually mentioned, put set up uh, six different seats, but for the prime seat and then four inches to the right, I think. Uh, mm. And and, that, and uh, that's the difference between the red and the blue curve on this graph. Exactly, exactly. These are four inches apart in a, you know, bedroom-sized, you know, listening room. Uh, and and that's another common wisdom that's wrong. People say, well, you know, the wavelength for 50 hertz is like 28 feet, so you have to go like, you know, 10 feet before you're going to get a big difference in response. And that's not true, as you can see here, because there are so many competing reflections coming from so many different uh, uh, places from, you know, the back wall, the left wall, the ceiling. Things bounce around, it bounces off this wall, hits that wall, comes back, and eventually gets to the microphone. So uh, some of these, you know, at, si at 71 hertz, at one location that's a null and at the other it's a peak. That's why, you know, uh, and that's a, that's 3 dB per, uh, 3 dB, uh, yeah, 3 dB per division. So that's like, you know, three, three, 10, 15 dB difference, just four inches away. And yeah. I'm convinced, I am absolutely convinced that this is the reason people will change their power cord. On, on on their CD player or the power <laughs> amplifier, and they sit down, and some of it is you know wishful thinking, and some of it is placebo effect, and some of it is your your hearing memory isn't really that good. By the time you turn everything off and change the cord, turn it on, five minutes later you sit down. But even if all of the, aside from all that, unless you sit in exactly the same same spot, and I mean within an inch or two, the sound really does change. That's yeah. you know, so that's that's what that graph is from is a, a different article on my uh, personal website, uh, not the real trap site, uh, called the "Common Sense Explanation for Audiophile Beliefs," saying you know yeah the sound really did change, but not because you changed the power cord, but because you now a couple inches away. Mm. And there's mm. another related graph. Now this one was just the low frequencies, uh, but if you show the high frequency one, it's like completely different. This is again the same. This is. Different data, different graph off the same data, the same sweep done, you know, four inches away, uh, mm -hmm. two different places. And uh, uh, and so if you're sitting, you know, when you before you change the power cord, you were sitting in a place that, you know, favors the harsh frequencies around, you know, two, three kilohertz. And then you sit down literally an inch or two away. And now you're not favoring those harsh frequencies. You're going to think, wow, that power cord, it doesn't sound harsh anymore. Yes. Wow. This is great. This is great. Uh, because you can't possibly, unless you have a, like a vice that you put your head in, that, that you put it back in exactly the same location each right. time, right. Uh, that's, that's going to be a much, much bigger effect than the, whatever effect the power cord might have. And that's why blind tests, especially, it doesn't have to be double blind. I mean, yes, that's better. And if you're doing research and you're going to publish it or, you know, submit it to the AES for consideration, yeah, it should be double blind. But even single blind, I can test myself single blind just by closing my eyes and doing various things where I'm not paying attention to what I'm switching. Just hit, hit you know, click, click the mouse button a bunch of times without counting and yeah. then uh, and keep my eyes closed. But this is why these kinds of things are so important. If you can get a friend to help you, because then you can sit still and you can change things. Uh, no, it's true. It's complicated to change power cord and it's hard to sit still. 
But this is what you need to do if you don't want to fool yourself and if you don't want to waste your money on stupid stuff that doesn't really change the sound compared to bass traps, you know, and not to turn this into a, a sales pitch for bass traps. So, you know, it's, you know, it's absolutely true. Uh, but uh, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But, and, and, you know, the whole first three chapters of my book are about this kind of stuff. And, you know, why people think they hear things they don't and what really matters and how you define audio and what harmonics are. And again, all in plain English and, you know, really common sense explanations. Uh, so that's a big part of my, you know, what I've been doing for the last three, four, five years.